What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Steelers Breakdown Podcast. Hey, it's game day. That's right. It is game day, everybody. The Pittsburgh Steelers play the Houston Texans tonight at 7 p.m. Football back at Akershire Stadium for the first time since last year. And so this is going to be a really, really fun start to the season. We get to see Justin Fields start. We get to see the first look at the rookies. Lots to see. The Texans will play their starters for what it sounds like two series, but they have plenty of people that are out uh, themselves. And so let's talk a little bit about guys I want to watch. I think yesterday we talked about position groups, battles. Today I want to dig in even a little deeper than just groups. I want to talk about specific players that I think are going to be very important to watch throughout this season, and specifically tonight, because I think that they can really pop. First of all, let's go to sleepers, um, because I think sleepers are really fun to talk about, because for re reality, most of the game, what you are going to be seeing is that bottom half of the 90 man, and so you're looking to see who will rise out of those ashes. And someone I've really liked over the past few weeks that has played very well is Thomas Grant. He's a defensive back, kind of a veteran at this point. He was with the Bears, was with the Browns. Hasn't really gotten a chance uh, to sh to get on a roster yet. But when he has been out there, he has done really well. I mean, really well this season. Credit to him for what he's been able to do. And he has been a guy that has gotten his hands on the football, He's been very sticky in man coverage. Either he's getting picks or being the reason that picks are happening, which I think is another very big thing to take into account. And so this is really something that I think the Steelers look at, and they're going to notice because he's already jumped up one rung in the depth chart. And so it hasn't gone unnoticed by the Pittsburgh Steelers either. And when you start to get that different style of, of defensive back, these guys that come in and are aggressive and want to play and press and aren't afraid of anything, that's the type of Steelers defensive back you need. And Graham really does kind of just check off those boxes. He fits into a lot of what they like. And so I think Graham is someone to watch. I think he could have a really – nice game today i also think in that defensive back room you know i don't think Beanie bishop's much of a sleeper anymore i mean he's listed as the starter and everybody kind of knows who he is but i think Graylon arnold you know this guy missed about eh, a week or so with with what mike Thomas described as a soft tissue injury he's only practiced about five or six days if even that and he has three interceptions and when he's out there he's making play after play after play so it's hard for me to not be impressed by that. So they have some guys in this slot corner room specifically that continue to stick out and make plays. And so, hey, man, keep an eye not on just Beanie Bishop because everybody's going to be watching Beanie Bishop, and I think rightfully so. Keep an eye on Thomas Graham and Graylin Arnold. They have kind of earned it, to be quite honest with you with how they've looked in training camp. Let's see what can translate into stadium, into games. This is where the preseason is very valuable. You know, less so when we're talking about guys like George Pickens and those guys, even though they will be playing. I think someone else I really want to see out of the rookie specifically is indeed Mason McCormick. Um, you know, we've talked about Troy Faltanu and Zach Frazier pretty extensively on this channel. And of course, you want to see how they do and you want to see how Peyton Wilson looks as well. Mason McCormick, though, is the most interesting to me because he's a bit of a raw player. He's coming from a level of football in the FCS where you do have to kind of take a little bit of time to get used to it. Very rarely, if ever, does an FCS guy suddenly come up and right away go straight to the moon. You know, that they're ready to play right away. And we have not seen that either. Um, with Mason McCormick. He has struggled at times, um, but he has done well against Logan Lee, against guys that they have put him up against. 
And so he has been someone that has actually stuck out against those lower level guys now. And then they put him up against Cam Harrod and got dusted three times. And so I really just want to see how he kind of takes to it, um, how everything's going to come about with him. I think that's really where you look at it. The mobility is great. He moves really well. I just want to see how he does against defensive linemen throughout his first game um, because he's going to be relied upon next year. But I want to see where the starting base is, specifically in a game scenario. So I think he's someone to watch. In the wide receiver room, you know, the wide receivers are obviously really, really kind of important to this team because we've talked about them all offseason. The IU thing is happening. And this isn't in the category of sleepers, but I am looking at Calvin Austin the third, maybe more than I'm looking at anyone else not named Justin Fields in this game. We're always looking at Justin Fields significantly. But I need to see what Calvin Austin does in a game. And maybe, you know, honestly, it, it needs to be a regular season game too because he has done stuff in the preseason like last year where he had that big catch against Tampa Bay. But I want to see... His speed, his route running, everything pop in this game. I need to see it because Calvin Austin has had a really nice camp. He had an absolutely phenomenal spring. And I think he's positioned himself right now as the wide receiver three on the current team's depth chart. And so he looks like a guy that is going to be the Khalif Raymond of the offense where you can throw the ball deep to him three or four times a game, and he might get you some explosive plays off those play-action plays. I want to see that today. I want to see what Calvin Austin can do. Would not surprise me one bit if we see Calvin Austin rip a big one off tonight. I think he's someone to watch. Going back to defensive backs, you know, I talked earlier this week to Corey Trice, and he's excited. This is going to be his first NFL game. It's going to be his first NFL action. He's getting starting reps at Dimebacker. Let's hope they get into situations where they can pull the dime out and we can see Corey Trice even with that first team. Um, and, and I think he's someone to really look at. How fluid does he look um, coming off the ACL? How much does he trust his knee to go out there and move? What's he looking outside corner, even against the second and third stringers? Because this is a deep wide receiving group for the Texans, so you're going to have quality wide receiver play probably throughout the second and third quarters, which is where Corey Trice will then come in and play. Um, so I want to see him on the outside. I, I, we haven't really seen a lot of it. Most of his reps have been limited to that dimebacker role, and Grady Brown basically told me uh, earlier this week that that has been the biggest thing for them, is that they have wanted to make sure they can mitigate the injury risk and try to get him to his first game. And so Grady Brown is someone that is smart about that, and now that we're here, I want to see it. I want to see where he sticks. Um, and I think that's something to really, really watch. Um, and so you look at, at him last year. He was extremely impressive when he was out on the practice field. Uh, I thought he was playing at a very high level and could have contributed last year. So let's see if he's at that same level in the game. And because he really hasn't had a good or a bad camp again, when you have that limited reps and He's only taken a few one-on-ones here or there. So, again, not too much to kind of read into with Corey Trice. So, this is going to be his first really significant action of the season. And so, I'm, I'm interested to see how he looks. Um, you look at the defensive line. I think the defensive line is going to be interesting today. Uh, you want to see how DeMarvin Leal looks. He's going to be playing some inside. He'll be playing some outside backer just because they have so many injuries over there and they're not going to play their first two. I don't even know if Marcus Golden's going to play much either. Um, and so you you see, you know, Jeremiah Moon, Kyron Johnson, DeMarvin Leal, those guys. But DeMarvin Leal especially has had a really nice camp. And so you want to see it. He's down to 275. He looks quicker. His motor is hot. Um, and he is running around there and beating defense, uh, offensive tackles with ease. And so you definitely want to see what he looks like out there. You know, a sleeper that has kind of had a pretty nice camp so far has been Willington Prevalon. Um, I'm not sure people have really heard much about the guy. Um, not talked about a ton, but he's got some burst to him. He wins off the line pretty quick. The athletic tools are there. When you actually look at him, he doesn't really look like a defensive lineman. Um, he's skinnier than you would think for a normal three-tech. Um, but then you see him out there, and he's just beating guys 
He's got strong hands. He's got like real pop behind him. Um, and he jolts guys back because of that first step plays with great leverage. Um, so I'm interested to see what he can do. Because I think he could be someone that maybe stands out and, and could definitely push for, you know, a practice squad spot um, in, in this room. So he's someone to watch as well. The last guy that I really want to watch and I want to point out is, is Dylan Cook at offensive tackle. Uh, guys that maybe you aren't thinking about, you know, Dylan Cook was the ninth O line and last year, didn't really play much. Um, aside from when there was an injury and he was forced into action. Um, and, and so Dylan Cook is a guy that looked really toolsy last year. He's a former quarterback, extremely smart player. And then you look at where he kind of takes the steps up. And the biggest thing for Dylan Cook is going to have to be with his hands and with his feet. He's got to play them in sync together. Last year, you know, maybe he would get – a little bit overset and then allow that inside door to open. Um, his hands can get a little wide so he could get charged with some holes, but he's really athletic. And I think he has really good tools to potentially be a swing tackle here. And I've talked about this before. I think if Dylan cook can prove he is ready to be the swing tackle for this team, that significantly opens up your flexibility to maybe do more with Dan Moore. Um, you know, do you want to move him? Um, I, I think it is possible. It is not out of the realm of possibility. But Dylan Cook's going to have to show something in games. He's had another pretty solid camp, but I want to see what he can show here in the preseason. We'll see how he does. All right, everybody. We'll have a post-game update live from Akersher Stadium. We'll have quotes. We'll have more. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notification bell. Thank you all for listening. We'll be back with more Steelers Breakdown.